Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how to evaluate the accuracy of statistics. When evaluating statistics, there are three primary considerations author, method, and the rule of plausibility. One of the first things you should look at is the credentials of the creator. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, getting started with statistics, there are generally three types of organizations that create statistics government agencies, advocacy groups, and university researchers. Advocacy groups tend to report bigger numbers to suggest there is a significant problem. Government agency statistics tend to be more conservative. University researcher statistics tend to be less biased, but are usually only found in scholarly articles. Keep in mind that corporations also produce statistics, but those are generally created with the express purpose of increasing sales. If a statistic doesn't include where it came from, don't use it. The next step in evaluating statistics is looking at how it was created. Remember, all statistics are created by someone counting something for a specific reason, and there are better ways to count than others. Start by looking at the sampling method of the statistics. Make sure the sample for the statistics is an accurate representation of the population it claims to represent. Additionally, if the sample is self selected, there is likely to be a bias in the results. People with strong feelings are more likely to fill out optional surveys. Another way people can lie with statistics is through framing. For example, when a statistic references children, it is important to know what they mean by children. A child could be anyone from newborns to 22 years old. If someone wants to report an artificially high number, they may pick and choose age groups accordingly. Someone can also misrepresent statistics by adjusting the polling period or reporting longer or shorter time periods. For example, sending out a survey about the popularity of a professional football team after they win the Super Bowl is going to skew results. For that matter, only providing a single year of data or skipping particular years in a longitudinal study can significantly mislead an audience. To demonstrate, when discussing water quality in Cleveland, a researcher could skip reporting the year the Cuyahoga River caught fire, or they could only report the year the river caught fire. Either scenario leads to significantly different conclusions, neither of which is an accurate representation of the data. Something else to look for are large dark numbers. A dark number is the difference between what we are able to count and what probably exists. For example, a survey that asked people to report how many hours they spent on social media probably has a large dark number because people are likely to underestimate or underreport how much time they spend looking at Facebook posts. Whereas something like the U.S. birth rate is likely to have a very low dark number because new parents have to file paperwork. Think about your subject. Is it likely to have a large dark number or a small one? The final way to evaluate statistics is the rule of plausibility, which means thinking about how reasonable it sounds. One way people try to trick us with statistics is by reporting really large numbers. Most people are not very successful at conceptualizing the difference between 30,000 and 300,000, but here are two ways to handle this problem. One way is to break the number down. For example, if you are given a large number, Convert it into a percentage of the U.S. population. Then apply that percentage to the population of your hometown and see if it sounds plausible. Another way to handle big numbers is to use benchmark numbers, which are the number of people in relation to a common occurrence. For example, how many people live in the USA, how many people are born in a year, how many people die in a year are all benchmark statistics. When you read or hear a statistic, Compare it to a benchmark. For example, if someone reports that 36,560 people died of car crashes in 2018, compare it to the total number of people who died that year to determine how large of a number that actually is. There are just as many ways to lie with statistics as there are ways to share information. So remember to evaluate your statistics by considering the author, method of collection, and the rule of plausibility. 
For more help at any point in the research process, please ask a librarian.